We'll call to order the meeting of the Morris Township Planning Board, uh, April 4th, 2022. Um, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided by the board in preparation of the 2022 annual meeting notice, which sets forth the date, time, and place of this meeting. And by properly posting such notice and forwarding this notice to those designated newspapers and persons requesting meeting notices. Moreover, in order to comply with the national and state declarations of the emergency related to the COVID-19 pandemic, I have this weird notice coming to my computer. Um, and in accordance with the Municipal Land Use Law, the Open Public Meetings Act and Emergency Remote Meeting Protocols for local public bodies, this meeting is being held virtually on a web-based platform with remote public access. Uh, would you please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the United States, of, the United States of America, to the, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, Under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Justice for all. Okay, thank you. And Jim will be our Sonia this evening. So Jim, on a roll call? Sure, uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman Benoit. I'm here. Mike Dunn. Here. Mayor Jorfrey. Here, and George Quillen has his hand up. He's an attendee. Linda Murphy. I'm here. George Quinlan. I think he's in the attendees. He's the attendee. Joe Alesso. Here. Kathy Wilson. Here. Tanya Ben Order. Here. Jesse Flowers. Here. Jeannie McKay. Let's see her in yet. Uh, Steve Warner. Here. Liz Leahy. Here. Jim, it's George Quillen. I'm here. Thanks, George. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have a quorum, Mr. Chairman. Did you get yourself there, Jim? I'm sorry, what? Did you get yourself? I am here, yes. You're here? Okay, great. I, I Thank you. felt it wasn't necessary. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, uh, first time on the agenda is a memorializing resolution on the, um, the Weisberger application. Steve? Yeah, uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Yeah, as the board will recall, this was the uh, minor subdivision relating to lot 41, 5 Edward Chip and Lane, uh, to two proposed lots, and the board uh, sought lot area variances for both proposed lots, uh, front yard setbacks for both proposed lots, and minimum lot width. Uh, as you know, we measured that at three different locations, and uh, there were three separate minimum lot width at various locations, uh, deviations required. Board did deny the application. Uh, I will readily admit I had the number wrong. On page 32, I had it by a vote of seven to two denied. It was by a vote of six to three denied. My apologies for that. I'd ask that any motion to adopt the resolution include that revision. Uh, and I did notice a couple of uh, items in the, uh, what I call the voting matrix that need to be uh, modified. Uh, X's did not necessarily fall in the right boxes. Uh, but we'll get that cleaned up so that it uh, uh, accurately reflects the vote uh, of six to three denial. Otherwise, I didn't have any changes to my own resolution uh, that I drafted, but uh, if any of the board members do, certainly uh, we should hear them. Board members, any uh, recommendations, suggestions on the application? If not, uh, Mr. Chairman, I just have one comment. I thought the resolution was very well written and I appreciate the time and expertise that went into crafting it. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Any Absolutely. other board members comments? Concerns? If not, I'll entertain a resolution on this resolution. Motion to adopt. Motion to adopt, thank you. Uh, I'll make a motion to adopt with the revised um, vote tally of 6-3. Second that motion. Motion by 
Wilson, second by Quillen. On a roll call. Mr. Quinlan? Yes. Mr. Flowers? Yes. Ms. Murphy? Yes. Ms. Wilson? Yes. And Mr. Benoit? Yes. Motion to denial is approved. Thank you. The next item on our agenda is a public hearing. Jim, do you want to give a summary? Sure. So this is uh, application PB 16-21 for the Morris County Golf Club. It's block 9101, lot 236 Punch Bowl Road. It's located in the OSGU zone. And the applicant's proposing uh, upgrade to the uh, maintenance facilities and then also a new uh, halfway house and administration building. And before we begin, Mr. Chairman, if I may, I did have an opportunity to review the notice, found the content of same to be sufficient, found it to be timely served, certified mail March 18, published on March 20, both at least 10 days prior to this evening. So the board does have jurisdiction to hear and decide the case tonight. Thank you very much. Um, you want to call the attorney to Mr. Cowley? Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Larry Cowley here on behalf of the applicant, Morris County Golf Club. Nice to see everybody this evening. Uh, I don't think we're going to take up all that much of your time, Mr. Chairman and members on direct. We'll have a few witness testimony items to go through. I'm sure there'll be some board questions and some staff questions, but on direct, it's a relatively straightforward and we hope appreciable application. What I'd like to do, Mr. Chairman, is just briefly frame what we hope to do here tonight. Let you know the three witnesses that you'll shortly hear from, and then we can go from there, uh, Mr. Chairman. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, I know the board's very familiar with Morris County Golf Club. We've been here before on prior applications for other improvements um, to the club. Tonight is really no different. Uh, the club at 36 Punch Bowl Road is about 146 acres in size. Existing golf club, existing accessory structures, parking areas, and the like, various improvements. Tonight, the applicant is trying to simply continue their thematic endeavors of modernizing, improving the facilities with new state-of-the-art equipment and facilities, all developed well within the belly of this very large campus, near the center of the property, as you'll see shortly. We trigger a few bulk variances, Mr. Chairman and members. Primarily, it's because of our setback when measured to the road, because we need a principal structure. And it's been agreed during prior applications and at Tech that the clubhouse essentially is our structure, which has a setback of several hundred feet. It's just under about a thousand feet. So almost anything we do on this property is going to be within a thousand feet of the roadway. Notwithstanding that, it's still significantly far back from the roadway system. Most of our developments and our engineer will walk you through them one by one, Mr. Chairman, and then Mr. Roding will walk you through the actual structures themselves, the elevation of the interiors. But most of our proposed development is at least 580 feet or so from the nearest roadway, whether it's punch bowl or old turnpike. In some cases, we exceed 1,000 feet, 1,300 feet. And because these structures are considered accessory, we've got a top height limitation of 15 feet. A few of these structures are going to exceed that. Again, well within the body of this club, this campus, won't be any impact from abutting properties. You won't even see it. Nevertheless, it does violate the code, so we trigger some bulk relief along with site plan relief. And that includes other improvements like fencing, walls, and entrance columns, things like that, which our engineer will walk you through, and Mr. Roding will as well shortly. I know that's very high level, Mr. Chairman, but there's a few moving parts here, all of which are in that same sort of category of limited accessory improvements for the betterment of the club that we think will not be any impact. Um, in more detail, you're going to shortly hear from Dan Bromage on behalf of the Morris County Golf Club. Dan will walk you through sort of the genesis as to what brought the club here this evening with these improvements, uh, what we hope to do and implement here, again, at sort of a high level. Tim Derrick is our scrivener of record from Langen Engineering. Tim's going to walk you through the site plan. It's a limited site plan because we're zoned in on this area of the property that's at issue here. But Tim will walk you through all of these structures that are proposed, what the deviations are. He'll go into more detail the numbers that I just sort of rattled off as to our setbacks from the roadway systems and what the bulk variances are. 
it, it's relatively limited overall. Quantitatively, there are a handful, but I think the board will appreciate that they're limited in nature, nature from a substantive standpoint. And lastly, we'll call Mr. Roding. Jeff Roding, as the board knows, is an architect. Jeff has designed these structures that are proposed, and Jeff will walk the board through exactly what's going to be located within these structures and what they're going to look like in more detail, um, tailing off of Dan Bromage's earlier testimony as to what we plan on doing in these structures. So that's our one, two, three this evening, Mr. Chairman. We'll try to be as reasonably expedient as possible, but we'll certainly uh, cover all the ground we need to to get the board's comfort level there. That's great, thank you. Um, will you be having a planner speak? We will not have a planner this evening, Mr. Chairman. The limited nature of the bulk relief, we think sort of speaks for itself. And we think the board can certainly infer and imply that the impacts are in fact limited and variance is warranted under the C standard. Okay, thank you. And if there are any positive, negative criteria you want to expound upon, do so during the testimony then. We certainly um, will, Mr. Chairman. And then in addition to that, we have three committee reports. We have the TCC report, we have the um, committee inspection report, and we received an environmental commission report today. Did you receive that? We did, Mr. Chairman. And, and for, fortunately, uh, we have no issues with that report. The early reports as well. We've seen the TCC report, and I think the other might be uh, internal to the board, but we did receive the Environmental Commission report today. Yes, it's internal to the board, but it does mention the stormwater, um, maintaining the stormwater management. Certainly, and, and Mr. Derek, our engineer, will certainly go through those. Items. Okay. That's great, then we can proceed. I can swear everyone in, Mr. Chairman. Uh, if we all the... Uh... Uh, individuals who will be testifying, including our planner and engineer, will raise their right hand. Do all of you swear to God or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. do. Thank you all. Back to you, Mr. Chairman. Can you call your first witness? Certainly. Our first witness will be Dan Bromage on behalf of the Morris County Golf Club. Uh, Dan, you were just sworn in, but for the record, can you please state and spell your name and provide the board with your affiliation with the club? Hi again, Dan Brummage, uh, B-R-O-M-A-G-E. I'm the, I'm the, I've been the chief operating officer at Morris County Golf Club for 18 plus years now. <clears throat> Just giving you a quick, you know, overview of what we're presenting this evening. A little bit of history. Morris County Golf Club was established in 1894. Uh, the oldest golf club established by women in the country. So a little piece, uh, piece of neat history for you. Uh, with that being said, the club has resided in, in the township for over 125 years. Uh, uh, you know, obviously that's pretty neat too, but uh, with 125 years, it leads to needed improvements uh, that are necessary from time to time. And, and this golf course maintenance facility is, is well past its useful life at this, at this juncture uh, in time. So, um, it, you know, after about a year and a half or two years of contemplating and planning, uh, the improvements over several years internally uh, here at, at Morris County Golf Club. Uh, we engaged Jeff Rodding and Langan Engineering back in January of 01 to kind of hone in of what we're looking to achieve here, uh, you know, to better to, uh, to better the facilities. Uh, so I think the project's been, you know, certainly vetted and, and thoroughly considered, you know, so, you know, so we were prepared to bring something in front of uh, in front of everyone tonight. Uh, in terms of like the operations of the club, you know, this, the, you know, the changes that we're looking to, to uh, get approved tonight, the operations are not going to change. The they same hours of uh, operations will, will remain the same. The same number of employees will name the same. Well, uh, there, no change to our day to day routine. It's just really a, a, a uh, you know, a physical plant that is beyond its use of life. And we're putting up a, 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 a new, uh, a new facility basically in the same area. Uh, you know, there's three main reasons why we're doing this tonight. And one, uh, no, one is in, in our top priority uh, is that better working conditions for our, our, our employees. Uh, our second is we're adding a car patrol system, which Jeff Roding will get into a deeper dive into that, that will be able to let us uh, allow us to conserve water. And, and the third is uh, to have proper indoor storage for what is now uh, very expensive uh, uh, equipment. Uh, so, you know, 50 years ago, you you know, kind of like you see when you go out in Pennsylvania, 
you know, Loma was just sitting out in the field. So, I mean, now everything's computerized and everything else, everything, everything needs to have a home. So it's just a different, uh, different world in terms of, you know, upkeeping of, of pieces of equipment. Uh, our proposal, obviously, like uh, like Larry, I think explained very well. It's kind of in the middle of the middle of the golf course, or you know, the, the impact around the surrounding area is really minimal. Um, and uh, that's all I think. I, you know, I want to thank everybody for their time. They're excited for the process. You know, if you have any questions for me, I'm happy to answer them. But at this time, I would just uh, hand it over to the pros. Thank you, Dan. Any board members? Questions for this witness? Chairman, I have a question. Mr. Cohen. Uh, I'm not sure whether it's for Mr. Bromage or for, for Mr. Callie, but uh, we board members received in our packages a set of seven prior um, approval uh, mm -hmm. memoranda resolutions of uh, the planning board going back to 1998. Right. And I wondered why that was, whether that was perhaps in response to a comment from the TCC asking whether there were any prior approvals uh, that were still um, outstanding. In other words, uh, things that have been approved that hadn't been built out yet. Right. No, no, I can explain that question. As a matter of, I think, prudent policy, uh, whenever an application is filed anywhere in the state, we always file an OPRA to get the benefit of the history of that site so the board can have the entire picture before them. There was no reason other than to give it full context of the history of this site. There's nothing from a prior approval that is out of whack or a condition that remains unsatisfied, nor any that we're seeking deviations from at this point. That's merely the background packet that goes along with every submission in every town that we file an application in, if there is site history, in fact, on file. And with this applicant, uh, there have been several prior development proposals and approvals. And is there anything that still is uh, um, potentially active that has been approved but hasn't been built out? Not, not to my knowledge, but you know, your township staff would certainly know the answer better than I. I can tell you there are no open notices of violations or non-compliance orders out there. I know that for certain from discussing that with my client. Uh, again, the resolutions are provided for context, nothing to do with uh, anything other than the fact that it provides you with the site history. Mr. Chairman, can I jump in on that for a moment? Sure, please. Just, just two things real quick, and I apologize for interrupting Board Member Cullen, but uh, number one, I consider it a best applicant's practice, if you will, so I commend uh, uh, Council for doing that with all Council's applications. Uh, number two, uh, I take it, uh, Mr. Kelly, that the applicant will stipulate uh, that to the extent uh, conditions of prior approvals are not inconsistent with any conditions of what may be an approval this evening, uh, they would comply with all outstanding uh, conditions of approval, correct? Certainly. Okay, thank you. And I, uh, my interruption is over, Board Member Crow. Uh, uh, that's fine, and thank you for, uh, for helping me. And I have no other questions. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, any other board members? None. Any members of the public wish to ask questions of this witness? Mm -hmm. Seeing none, uh, Mr. Callow, we'd like to proceed with your next witness. Yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Thank you, Dan. Our second witness will be Tim Derrick. He's our project engineer from Langen. Tim, you were, you were sworn in, but would you mind giving the board the benefit of your qualifications and background in the field of engineering? Sure. I have a, a BS in civil engineering from Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, uh, and I've been a civil engineer in New Jersey for over 20 years and hold, and hold a license, have, have held my license since 2007. And you prepared the plans of record that are filed with the board, is that right? I prepared them, yes. Okay. Mr. Chairman, we'd offer Mr. Derrick as an expert in the field of civil engineering to testify as such this evening. No objection. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, and shortly, um, Council, we're probably going to mark one item this evening that the board did not have in their printed packet, but we did advance a few days ahead per the DLGS guidelines over to Sonia. And that's just an aerial to give the board a little bit of a sense as to the size of our property, what's on it, and where we're developing. Everything else I think you're going to see this evening was a previously printed file document, none of which is going to be mocked up in color 
if anything does deviate, we'll let you guys know as we go there so we can mark it accordingly. But shortly, I think Tim will present to the board that aerial and we can mark it when we get to it. Um, Tim, if you would, you heard my proffer to the board. You heard Dan's testimony as to the goals and why we're proposing these accessory improvements. If you could take the board on a tour, a brief tour through the existing club, and then we'll start focusing in on the areas of improvement, and then we'll call out the deviations, if you would, Tim. Sure. Let me start by uh, sharing my screen and a couple exhibits. Uh, so start uh, starting off here, this, this is an exhibit that's a plan that's part of our plan set. It's uh, the overall site map and tax lot plan. It just, it's a simple plan showing the surrounding tax lots and the club's pro property and then the project's orientation as, as, as part of that, that site. Uh, can, we, can we just get the last revised date on that? Sh it's sh it's a, it's all dated 224, 2022. Thank you. And I guess, as you can see, uh, for this, for this page, uh, project North is page is paged up. Uh, the, the maintenance facility is located in the middle of the property. St. Elizabeth's, uh, university is, is to the South, um, it fronts on Punchwell Road to the south as well, an old turnpike road to the and and a railroad to the west. Uh, and then oh, you can't see it on this map because it's it's mostly tax maps. But the, the Prescott Road runs through here. Uh, maybe it's appropriate at this point for me to flip over to the aerial aerial map that we've prepared. It's kind of a little bit more descriptive. It's uh, this Tim was not submitted as part of the printed package, I believe. Is that right? No, it wasn't submitted, but we figured we assumed, we thought it would paint a better picture for the board to understand where the project is and what and exists it, on site. And it does, but we'll, we'll, let's just mark it for a moment. So it's a Langen plan entitled Area Map, Aerial Map, dated 331, 2022. Very good. Steve, okay if we mark this as A1? Uh, not only okay, preferred. Thank you. You got it. Thank you. All right, Tim. Um, I'm sorry. Please go ahead. Sure. So as I was saying, Punchbowl Road is to the south. Old Turnpike is the left. There's a railroad running through here as well. Uh, St. Elizabeth is here, Prescott Road, and then residential properties to the east. Uh, the project itself is located generally right pretty much in the center of the property. The clubhouse, as you can see, which creates the variances we'll talk about later, is over is on the east side of the property kind of sitting back from Punchbowl Road and access is off of Punchbowl Road and the adjacent I think, Delaware Road and the residential properties. Uh, one other little bit of work as part of this application is there's some entrance, entrance improvements that are proposed uh, at, along this driveway, which is internal to the club's property. Uh, the overall lot located in Morris County is approximately 146 acres. And this pro and the project area is a little over, it's just about three acres. Uh, the site is low is zoned open space government use OSGU. Uh, and the and as I said, the current access to the clubhouse is, is by private driveway here, but the existing access to the maintenance facility is off of Punchbowl Road by, the, by, by a driveway that runs through the course. There's no proposed changes to this driveway. Uh, existing buildings on site are the clubhouse, there's a pool facility here, and then, all, then the maintenance facility, which encompasses several buildings. Uh, it's probably at this point, I can probably zo zoom in to To the, this pro, to the project area where you can see this is the existing shop building that will remain. There's an existing cold storage building. There's a small existing halfway house here along with a cart storage building and material bins. These are just kind of open covered bin where they can store sand and other loose materials. Uh, adjacent to the, adjacent to the, the project is, is a isolated wetland. 
this point, I guess we can I'm gonna move back to our plan set and go to our, our site plan. So as part of the work, the shop building is, is, will remain and be renovated. The cart storage building, which is located here, will be, is a, will be relocated to this location. The cold storage building is proposed to be demolished and the halfway house is proposed to be demolished. And those will both be replaced with a new halfway house it will also function as an administrative building and a new cold storage and slash kind of fueling wash down and carb trawl area. Uh, there's also an environmental building, existing environmental building that will be demolished and the, and the material bins that are here will be, will be reconstructed to better condition. The entire, uh, and that's the, generally the entire, entirety of the improvements in this area, as well as the associated parking. Uh, which brings me to the point that the existing, uh, there's no striped parking existing within the maintenance facility that as part of this project, they'll provide uh, tw 23 new parking spaces, which is per code in order to add the, the square footage for this facility, which is uh, it's 1,055 of additional gross floor area would generate the requirement for 22 additional parking spaces. So, we're providing an additional parking space than what is required. Uh, as per your code, open, cold uh, storage facilities do not generate a requirement for parking. So the car storage, the, the cold storage area, and it's really just the halfway house, which is an administrative facility, which is generating the, the parking requirement. To note though, the entire facility, golf, golf course facility, is under parked per code. There's the, your requirements to require about one per 100 square feet plus additional two parking spaces for driving range practice tees. Existing on site, there's 219 parking spaces and per code you'd be required to have 616 parking spaces. Uh, per the club's been op operating with their existing parking as is and they haven't experienced any issues and don't propose to add any to any new facilities or uses that will create additional demand. And so we'll be requesting the parking, a parking variance from the required. Mr. Chairman, if I could just ask one question at this out of order, so to speak, thank you. And, and maybe Mr. Cowley can answer. Uh, Mr. Cowley, it's my, uh, my understanding though that the existing uh, parking deficiency uh, was previously approved by the board as reflected in prior resolutions, is that correct? That, that is correct, Mr. Warner. Okay, so there's no uh, exacerbation of the parking deficiency per the testimony. It's actually, uh, in essence, uh, providing 23, whereas only 20 further are required, correct? Right, exactly. The, the delta of prior approval to current proposal is just about zero. It's not an intensification. That's absolutely right. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I guess, and the, the final point as part of this, work as part of this project is I guess, for the site plan wise, if there are existing trees that that needed to be removed as part of this this plan. And I guess a, and a permit was previously obtained to remove trees within this project area due to some, tr the limitation on, re on removing trees due to the presence of the Indiana bat. Uh, and I get, and at this point, I'm gonna kind of go through what the variances are as we, as we described, the in this zone, there's no, re, there's not the bulk variances are, are kind of left to the discretion of the board. But there is a requirement that the accessory buildings can't be any closer to the road than the principal building. The principal building being the being the clubhouse, which sits just under a thousand feet from Punchbowl Road and 2,800 feet from Old Turnpike Road, creates. Uh, creates a need for a variance for the new and existing buildings. And you know uh, what, example, maybe, maybe the aerial might help too in a moment after you zone in on this to give the board a little bit of a sense as to where we are on the property and exactly how far we are from I, uh, from each different setback. Sure. I, I'm just to get, 
to to note on your plans there is there are dimensions that we've called out for the distances from the building buildings to the surrounding roads just for your reference but per kind of a, to Mr. Kelly's point the setback is requirement is based on the location of the clubhouse which is sitting here so obviously these buildings are sitting internal to the internal to the site based on the existing landscape and topography there's no noticeable difference from the surrounding properties so there's not there's not a there's, there's negative there's no negative impact by any of these changes and if, if you could for the record tim if you could just call out the proposed setbacks for each of the structures and after we do that we'll discuss briefly the heights sure so go, going through the existing shop building which is to be renovated is located 690 feet from Punchbowl Road and approximately 14,080 feet from Old Turnpike Road. This, the new co cold storage, carb troll, fueling, and washdown building is 710 feet from Punchbowl Road and 1,480 feet from Old Turnpike Road. These, these are approximate dimensions. Uh, the cart storage building is 630 feet from Punchbowl Road and 1,400 feet from Old Turnpike Road. The halfway house and administrative building is 820 feet and from Punchbowl Road and 1,580 feet from Old Turnpike Road. And the covered storage building is 580 feet from Punchbowl Road and 1,330 feet from, the, from Old Turnpike Road. I'm sorry, the last one was 1,000, what? Three, 330. Okay, and the what was the second building? I thought I had that as a new car storage. Uh, there was the existing shop building. Then there was a that's here the exist the proposed cold storage, carb trawl, and fueling and washdown building. And then there was a cart storage building here, halfway house, an administrative building, and then covered storage. I'm still having a problem. You, uh, you, a new car storage, and I have existing shop building, new car storage, then car storage building. Am I missing something? Uh, it, the cold storage building is part of. Uh, it, it's called Carb Troll. It's a it's a water wash off station, which is which is connected to the cold storage. This, okay, this the building, cold, the, cold, the cold storage car troll building, is the second one, correct? Correct. Yes. yes. Okay. That's the, I thought you were saying car storage. It was cold storage. I got it now. Thank you. Sorry. No, no, no problem. Oh, Tim, before we go over the heights now, just from, from a numerical standpoint, you're testifying solely as an engineer, but the setback requirements of the zone and setbacks in general, I think, are intended to protect proper open space, structure volume, massing, uh, streetscape congruity, the numbers you just referenced, looking at it on this plan, are we sufficiently set back, notwithstanding deviating from the code here, so that we do not and will not have massing, volume, streetscape incongruity issues with our abutting property owners, given the location of proposed development? Yes. Now, before we move on to the structure heights, um, you heard Dan's testimony that we're not changing operations at all. It's essentially a net zero change of operations. This is an effort to modernize, improve, and, and even implement some eco-friendly developments. Um, in your opinion, is this consistent with the existing operations on a club such that where we're locating this on your site plan there wouldn't be any negative impacts from our neighbors, whether it be acoustics, odors, daily operations, anything like that, given the location on this property where we propose to redevelop, if you will. Correct. There'd be no, there'd be no negative changes from, from existing operations. Okay. Um, moving on now to the other part of our relief, Tim, which are structure heights and Jeff Roding, we'll get into this in more detail 
when he provides the board with the benefit of the elevations and the utility of these structures we're proposing. If you could just call out where we are deviating, proposing to deviate from the 15 foot top height accessory limitation, uh, which structures and where, and what our proposed top heights are, please, Tim. Sure. So just by the nature of the limitation of 15 foot building heights, the, the size of these buildings are just gonna create buildings in excess of 15 feet. So the existing shop building is as measured per, per your code, which we, it takes into account the existing uh, proposed grades, uh, it's 20.4 20, 20. feet tall. The cold, this, the proposed cold storage, carb trawl, fueling and washdown building has a height of 24.7 feet. And the halfway house and administrative building have a height of 31.67 feet. And then the covered storage building has a height of 18.9 feet. Okay. So these are all lesser than what you would see a, a standard single family residential height allowance of 35 or so, but they exceed the accessory limitation. So again, I'm gonna ask you, Tim, the location of these structures on the property, are they such that exceeding the top height is gonna be visible and or cause any impact to the abutting property owners that vary between 600 feet to over a thousand feet beyond us on this 146 acre site? No, no, it will not. Okay. Before we go on, Mr. Chairman, I'm, I'm sorry again to interrupt, but um, what, so one of the five buildings is not in excess of the 15 foot accessory structure height limitation. Is that correct? Correct. The cart storage building. Okay. Thank you. So the last item, Tim, I want to go over before we turn you over to questions of the board and their professionals is we're proposing some other nice improvements if you hear some other amenities. And you mentioned them earlier, the columns, um, the walls. If you could briefly just describe those, um, we filed the landscape architect plan. Uh, if you could just you know reference what you see on that plan, the board might have some questions, they might not. And we can just maybe call out the location again of these proposed improvements as compared to the site plan. Let me quickly just go back to the aerial aerial plan because just to locate you. So there's also some additional improvements the club is proposing at this internal entrance on off their internal driveway to their club. It's uh it's some landscaping and columns as depicted on uh, drawings provided to to the board. Uh, it's it's a set of columns and landscaping located near their driving range. If that if that helps you. Uh, includes some proposed cobbles and columns and, and uh, landscaping. And you can see the different views of what they anticipate. Okay. You're referencing the conceptual plan for entry pier area, not for construction is the title from the distinctive Correct. design and management dated Correct. November 16, 2021. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So, Tim, the, the final question that I have on this is there are height limitations for these types of structures and um, they've got to have some level of transparency, right? They can't be fully opaque. These are not. So as an engineer, my question to you is, will these developments, if approved and if developed, interfere with any site distances or create any type of safety issues for whether someone walking or a passenger vehicle coming by and through these structures? No, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't believe so. They're set back from the intersection, and they're okay. Uh, Tim, you had an opportunity to review the Environmental Commission's memo. I think it's dated March 15, twenty twenty-two. Um, yes. Any issues with compliance with their recommendations? I believe a lot of the recommendations already were responded to in the resubmitted plans, but. Uh, I'd like to turn that over to you for a moment. No, we don't have any issues with uh, any of their comments. Uh, some of their comments had to do with submission of a tree removal plan and uh, a landscaping plan, both of which been, have been provided. Okay, so no issues with compliance with that. Okay. Um, 
Tim, at this point, uh, we'll, we'll turn you over to any questions of the board and their consultants. Mr. Chairman, we'd make Mr. Derrick available to any questions you folks might have. Yes, please. So we can proceed with um, board member questions. Any boards, board members wish to? Ms. Murphy. Sorry, I have to unmute. Um, I just want to verify that the um, additional 23 parking spaces that you're adding here in the center of the course are essentially for employee parking, correct? Correct. Okay. And they did not exist previously? They did not exist as striped parking spaces currently. Okay. But employees park there just not in striped parking spots. Correct. Okay. Thank you so much. Mr. Quillen? Thank you. Can I be heard? Yes. Options here. Hold on one second. Uh, I wanted to ask a question about the, um, about the height of the buildings that are there now. Uh, you gave the heights of the buildings that are proposed to be constructed, but uh, what are the heights of the buildings that are there now? And in particular, what's the maximum height of, of uh, the buildings that are there now? I, I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but based on recollection, I believe the existing shop building, which is to remain as the, is, pro, is probably the tallest building. The cold storage building is probably of similar height though. So They're all one, one story metal buildings. So it's probably lowers. about 20 feet tall. Uh, the, the existing, the, the renovated shop build, the shop building is 20.4 feet tall. So, yeah, this, if any, this building, I, I don't know the exact height, but it's similar, similar height, maybe slightly taller, slightly shorter. Okay. I was surprised to learn of the existence of any buildings in this area at all. Uh, it's funny, I've, I've driven Punchball Road so many times, I've driven past that driveway that is the access point to, to these buildings. I was completely unaware that there were any buildings in there. Um, I've walked all Turnpike Road many times. Uh, is there any place from, from the surrounding roadways where you believe the existing buildings are, are visible from? The clubhouse, of course, is on high ground and is visible from a number of different directions, but I get the impression these buildings are on much lower ground. Is that, is that true? And, and are they visible from anywhere? I, I don't know if they're visible from anywhere from the surrounding areas. Do you know what the elevation of the ground is there relative to to Old Turnpike Road or or Punchbowl uh, Road where the driveway comes in? I'd have to I'd have to look that up, but it, this 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 pro, this site the project site's higher than Punchbowl Road. I'm I'm going to say by, by yeah I'm going to say by ten feet, but that's a little, a little bit of an educated guess. I can pull up I can find and find the exact elevation if you want to know. Okay. Um, and then uh, could you indicate again, you said there's adjacent wetland uh, and I, I missed where you were indicating where that wetland is. Can you indicate where that is? Is it off? It's, it's on this over here, this, this line, um, this line here is the wetlands line. And it's an isolated wetland, so you can see the opposing side. Okay, is there any restriction that you're subject to to, uh, to stay a certain distance away from the wetland? There's a there's a 50 foot wetland transition area. Uh, we will be encroaching on that, and we would do, and we will be filling a portion of the wetlands. Uh, this is subject to DEP approval, which we also will need for this part of this project work. Uh, a, a wetland scientist from Langen has been in contact with the DEP and we have had a pre-application with them to confirm that the developmental development plan uh, fits within their permanent guidelines. Okay, and are you working on, or 
have you considered a plan B if they if they turn you down? And would you have to move these buildings to the to the we left went, on this diagram by a few feet? We wouldn't anticipate that right now. The, the general limit of disturbance disturbance of this project is with is within previously previously disturbed uh, wetlands transition area. So I get in, our belief is the worst case scenario is that the the bioretention basin that's proposed may have to sh get shifted outside of the wetlands area, but that that wouldn't change the general layout of the of the of the facility. Okay, and then my final question is kind of a silly question, but I'm curious: what is a cold storage building? What 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 are you? What is the it, golf club? It's for? not it, the only reason it's your cold just remain refers to the fact that it's not heated. It's where they store their mowers and other supplies and other equipment. It's just a big heat, unheated uh, building. Thank you. Thanks very much. That, that was all I had. Thanks. Ms. Wilson? Thanks. I had to unmute. Um, and I had this similar questions that were already asked, but just a couple others. Um, are, are you going to be providing any further testimony on the landscape plan or uh, just we, reference it? Like, um, I, I, I can reference it and discuss it briefly if, if you like. Um, I just had one uh, question or point about that. I, I noticed on the landscape plan that I had that it referenced in uh, one or a couple of locations that you were planning to put Norway spruce in. And I just want to highlight that we have been making available to applicants uh, a document that our environmental commission has created, do not plant list is what we call it. Okay. And, um, I, I, I guess I'm asked, it, it, it's, a, it's a voluntary list, it's not mandated, but I, I guess I would ask that you uh, take a look at it and the Norway spruce is one of the um, plants that's requested not to be planted. So there are there are alternatives listed in there, and I would um, ask that you take a look at that list. I'm I I'm not sure. Maybe Jim knows. Have has that been sent? I guess it has not been sent to the golf course, right? I'm talking about the do not plant list. I'm not aware that it's been sent to them. Thank you. So can we send it to them and uh, request that they read it and comply with it? Perhaps the Environmental Commission can uh, send that to them or send it to me and I will forward it to them. Okay. Okay. Um, one question about the, um, the aerial picture that you showed. Um, the internal entrance to the club ends um, where it, it doesn't go, it, it's, it's well, how far away is the entrance to the club from punch ball? We're, uh, to the, are, we, are you talking about the entrance of the clubhouse? Yeah, you're putting, you're putting the um, improvements at the, at the driveway entrance right over here, right? That you showed. Right here. Your, your, yeah. So the, the, the road that comes in front of that, 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 that is not owned by the golf course, correct? The golf course property begins where the entrance that you're making some improvements on begins. Is that correct? Uh, uh, the, the, cl the club, the club owns, uh, owns that property. Owns the road? It, yes. Okay. Okay. So that I didn't know that. I thought that was um, okay. I appreciate that clarification. And also, I would just like to ask for any comment you may have on like, has, has any of this work been like, has, has it been started already? Mm -hmm. Any of it? The only thing that has occurred is, is some tree removals. Some tree removals over on the, where over, your cursor for the, is, over there. Over, yeah, for the maintenance facility. 
Pursuant to a permit, Tim, just to be clear. Pursu- yes, yeah, sorry. It was pursuant to a, a tree removal permit that was submitted by, by the club. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Ms. Van Order. Thank you. Thank you very much. I just had a quick question, and it could just be that I, I was having a difficult time hearing some of the words uh, or, or just distinguishing numbers. So I, I think I heard you say, and I, I completely understand that the club has um, a, 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 a parking deficiency that's already been approved by previous planning boards. I, I get that concept very well. Um, I understand that <laughs> this additional square footage that you're adding is triggering um, a, a number of parking spaces a, a slightly less than what you're proposing. So. Uh, to be to just understand the you had said that they're required per code. I, I wrote down six sixty, but I was wondering as I heard it, did you say six sixteen, or did you say six sixty? Um, I said six. I said six one six. Thank you. Okay, so I was uh, not hearing that correctly. I appreciate that. And uh, just to clarify, two hundred and nineteen exist. Uh, there are these informal, uh, not non-striped uh, spaces that will become formal. Uh, Twenty-three, I think you said, for a total of two forty-two. Is is that correct? Correct. Thank you so much. Uh, any other board members? I have a quick question, Jim. Do you need to? Um... Look at or approve this, the um, base storm basin. Yeah, I have, a few, I have a few questions related to uh, stormwater management. Okay, so great. To, is that part of the TCC that. report related to that? It's uh, outside of the TCC report. Okay, well, do you want to proceed then? Sure. Uh, you know what, um, Tim, can you just give us a basic overview on the, uh, you know, what's proposed as far as stormwater management goes first, and then I can, uh, I'll ask my mm -hmm. questions. Sure. So this is our, our great our grading and drainage plan dated 224, 2022, CG 101. Uh, the existing site of uh, the, the site has a has a, a drainage divide located approximately in the middle of the project area. Uh, due to that, we've kind of the system uh, has two distinct drainage areas. One that drains down to a fire retention basin on the on the west side of the site, and another one, another drainage, another fire retention basin on the west side of the site. The the fire retention basin on the west side of the site collects mostly uh, surface runoff from the parking area, parking and I guess maintenance area and will provide uh, water quality, quantity, and recharge in the, in the base, in the bioretention basin. The bioretention basin to the, to the north, to the northeast will provide uh, quality and quantity uh, requirements. There's a small underground infiltration basin that will provide the remaining uh, recharge requirements. The bulk of the recharge requirements that for this area are provided for this project are provided in the basins here to the to the west. Uh, there's a series of catch basins and and roof leaders that bring all the water down into the into the individual basins. All right, my my questions, well, you know, first question relates to the emergency spillway. Um, you know, I'm, uh, I didn't see any type of stabilization. Is the uh, grass sufficient to, uh, uh, would be considered stable for emergency spillway flows? Is that something that was investigated? <coughs> I, 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 I will need to confirm that. Okay. And if not, if stabilization is required, you're willing to uh, install that as part of the project? Uh, yes, of course. And uh, I, I note on your details for the uh, outlet structure, it's a, a box type rack um, for, the, uh, for the low flow orifice. Uh, my recommendation would be some type of sloping trash rack. You know, that design should be modified in order to help facilitate maintenance. 
and then also a uh, on the top of the outlet structure is a uh, you know cast iron essentially a, a catch basin casting and my recommendation would be going to uh, an aluminum type grate I, I can give you a detail on that but uh, it helps facilitate maintenance where you know a, a man can just open that on his own as opposed to needing machine uh, okay. to, to open that and uh, I did note that there's uh, some trees and planting in the embankment. Uh, you know, we would consider this to be a dam and the, uh, the planting, you know, on that uh, embankment would be limited just to uh, prevent root, root intrusion. Um, as the, are you willing to stipulate that that uh, landscaping will be modified so it's not, uh, you know, in the, in the dam portion of the uh, stormwater management facility? Uh yeah, we don't have a problem with modifying the landscaping. I may like to have a conversation with you to make confirm uh, what plantings you, you you're, are appropriate or where you're considering this to be a dam uh, as well. The this is it's only two and a half feet deep, but uh, that said, we don't have any we don't have any issues with adjusting the landscaping per as you require. And the uh, last item I had is uh, as a condition of approval, assuming uh, approval is granted on this application, um, we need a, an operation and maintenance manual, manual and also a stormwater access and maintenance agreement. Is the applicant willing to provide that as a condition of approval? I, 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 we have it prepared, so that's not a problem. I thought it was submitted with our package, but we'll, prov we'll provide the operation and maintenance manual. Okay, thanks. And the, um, you know, I have a question related to the uh, washdown area, and that may be something that I don't know if that you can answer that, or is that something to be more directed towards um, Mr. Rotting? Yeah, I'm, I'm just uh, curious if there's like a recycling system that's going to be installed as part of that. Uh, uh, Mr. Rotting can answer all the all the questions associated with these buildings. But yes, there's a recycling system. And the uh, last item that I had was a. Uh, um, as a condition of approval, can you provide us a, a site triangle layout for that uh, entrance gate just to ensure that there are no, um, you know, side obstructions for the intersection, you know, by the main entrance where the columns are proposed? Uh, yes, well, we can, we can come up with some exhibit. All right, thank you. I have no further questions at this point. Uh, Jim, are they required to have any kind of um, solid removal or skimming facilities? <coughs> uh, for? For flow from the driveways coming into these catch basins. So there would be regular maintenance um, to clean out. That's, you know, if there's sediment and stuff that's washing to the basin, is that where you're going in now? Yeah, or oils. Mm. Um, you know, I don't, you, are you providing anything for any type of oil separation or where's that type of maintenance go on where there would be, uh, you know, changing the oil and mowers and, and that sort of stuff? Is that inside the, uh, the maintenance building? Yeah, that, yeah, that's all inside the, the cold storing, fueling and washdown. Uh, I think Jeff can go into the design, uh, Mr. Rana can go into the design of, of those facilities a little better, but I think you're, he can, that when he describes the building, you'll better understand how it functions. Okay. Thanks. Okay, actually I was thinking of, oils on the surface of the driveways and stuff. I don't know whether that's required or not, or just thought I'd throw it out there. Typically not required, but um, you know, the detention basins would filter that stuff. Sometimes we see some site plans where there's some inserts in the catch basins that have some, um, you know, oil separation or, or collection. Okay. And how about um, tree replacement? Is this the right witness to talk about tree replacement? Yes. Um, so like, does it meet the township ordinance? I'll give the short answer. Yes, and you can elaborate on that. So. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Let me. Uh, we have and within our set, we have a. We have we have a copy of the tree removal plan, which includes the calculations. This is this was submitted as part of the the tree removal permit application. Uh, as shown, there's there's 24 trees to be removed, an additional 11 specimen trees, uh, using using the requirements of of the, your tree removal code that requires 78 replacement trees, uh, which we then show on our landscape plan. Are you searching for a waiver for 
evergreen versus deciduous, or this is all deciduous? Is there, I guess, I, I, is there a requirement, question, I guess that's a question from, I have, is there a requirement to not use deciduous or evergreen trees as replacement trees? We, I didn't read that in the, the tree replacement requirements. Generally, we replace what's being removed. I think there may be a couple evergreen trees that are being removed, but uh, you know, if you want to provide a breakdown, I know that uh, your landscaping plan does propose both deciduous and evergreen trees. Yeah, we. I guess I don't. I don't believe the club has an issue with one reviewing. If we have to review the no the no plant list and as well as the requirement for matching general general tree type, not specific species, uh, we can we'll review and revise as necessary. Okay, thank you. Um, Ms. Lahini, do you have anything? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, I just have a, a few questions um, that I just from the TCC report um, dated January 31st, 2022, that I just wanted to go through um, to have the answers on the record if they haven't already been addressed. Um, and starting, and this perhaps is for the next witness after Mr. Derrick, but um, point number two on page two of the TCC report says the applicant needs to meet with the building department to ver verify sprinkler requirements and code compliance issues. Is, is that really a question for you, the, the architect? It, yeah, it yes. Is. I believe that okay. was done, but, but Jeff will speak to that shortly. Okay, fine. Um, then again, this again, number four, the TCC advised the applicant to meet with the fire department to determine where hydrants should be located. Now, is that a question for Mr. Derrick or the architect? That, that was me. I had a conversation with the fire department and located and we show, we show a fire hydrant per their request. Okay, great. And um, the other thing, point number six, uh, the TCC advised that the applicant to confirm that there'd be no variance needed for retaining wall heights. And I, I noticed that there is no indication on your site plan that you need a variance, but I just want to confirm that. We do not need a variance for retaining wall height. Okay. And then I think uh, the next one, point eight, uh, oh, this is uh, depicting the regulated wetland and transition area. And you, you did do that, I saw that. Um, then number nine, um, and again, this might be for the following witness, but the TCC advised the applicant to confirm and provide documentation to the building department that there are no open permits associated with any prior development approvals. And you, I believe you testified to this already, but I just want to verify. I think, I think Je I'm not sure Tim can confirm that. Jeff no. Froden will be able to though. Okay, that's fine. Uh, those are all the comments I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, Mr. Kaplan, do you have between you and Steve? <laughs> no questions, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. Um, I'll open up these uh, questions to members of the public who may have questions. Any members of the public wish to ask questions of this witness? Seeing none, Mr. Kyle, do you want to introduce your next witness? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Tim. So our final witness this evening, Mr. Chairman, will be, will be Jeff Rodding. I know he's testified once or twice before this board in the past, but Jeff, for the record's sake, would you mind uh, confirming that your license remains current and good standing as an architect in the state of New Jersey? You're muted, Jeff. Still muted, Jeff. How's that? Better? Gotcha, we got gotcha. you. Okay. Yes, my license is current. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. Mr. Chairman, we could certainly voir dire Mr. Rodding further, um, or the board can accept his qualifications as a licensed architect. That's how he'll be testifying this evening. No objection. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, Jeff, you heard you heard Dan's explanation and the story as to what brings us here this evening for these much needed and desired improvements for the club. Club Tim brought everybody sort of on a tour around the lay of the land of the club that we've got today on this 150 acre site. Uh, if you would, Jeff, maybe go in a little deeper into these structures, showing the board what they're going to look like, um, comment on whether or not we think we're going to see them from abutting properties. Not that that's a bad thing if you saw them, but the expanse of property, I think, is such that they're going to be pretty much dwarfed, notwithstanding the quantity and size of these structures. Yeah, um, if I could uh, get my uh, screen shared here, that'd be great. 
You've granted access to screen sharing. Thank you, Mr. Slate. Uh, let me know if it comes up. <laughs> Let's try this again. Da, 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 da. Trouble is the way the size of the screen it shuts out my uh, assets, my drawing. Hang on. All right, here we go. Got it, Jeff. Thank you. You see that? Okay. Sorry about that. Um, is that note in the middle of your screen too that says stop sharing? No. No, just okay. I think just you see that, Jeff. Okay, you can see it. Okay. All right. Uh, but before I on to that, let me just answer the couple of questions that are out there so I don't forget them. Um, we have gone into the uh, uh, the building department, spoke about the uh, need for sprinklers. There is no need for sprinklers on this project due to the size of the buildings and the types of the buildings. Um, we uh, also dealt with a number of uh, what the, the, the building department thought were open permits. Uh, a lot of it was administrative uh, filing issues, and I think we're we're at the bottom of it. I believe there's one more to go uh, that uh, we're aware of and it's gonna be satisfied and the building department is satisfied that we have taken care of it. Uh, so where we are about to take care of it. So there's only one open issue there. Uh, no, no issues, but just an open permit that they're working on. So uh, we're, we're, uh, we're looking at uh, uh, essentially four buildings that we're working on and one that we're relocating. Uh, and to be clear, I think Mr. Warner was calling the uh, the one building a car building. It's actually a golf cart building, and it's just a storage component. That's the small building that uh, Mr. Derrick showed on the uh, on the lower left hand side of his site plan. And immediately to the left of that was a, a plan uh, for material bins. Um, for those who don't know, what material bins are essentially it's a it's a shed uh, that allows them to put. Uh, golf course material, product, sand uh, for the golf course, uh, soils and, uh, and the like in a uh, storage component. It's dumped uh, by a truck and it's kind of, it's segregated into uh, different materials so they could use it on the golf course. Uh, it's a roofed over structure uh, to protect it from the weather. And it's a three-sided, each, each of these bins is three-sided and that allows it to uh, stay segregated. And uh, as you can see from this drawing here in front of you, this is in your set, by the way, uh, the drawing here in front of you, we're proposing five bins. There is material bins on site now, but they're in a little bit of a, a dilapidated state. As uh, Mr. Bromwich has said, uh, this is an upgrade of uh, what we have presently. And uh, it's, uh, you'll note on the upper left, uh, there's a cross section on the plan here that shows it um, cut into the hill. So it's, it's, it's a very unobtrusive, uh, element the, the the bulk of what you see from the golf course side is really going to be the uh, the roof uh, you know uh, rather than the building itself and the building is as as I said accessible on the only the one side and open air uh, this happens to show the card storage building just to the immediate right of that as well I'll move to the next one um, I'm going to skip this one it's only a foundation plan uh, the, the the next building um, that I'll talk about is our combination halfway house uh, administrative building. Presently, there's a small halfway house uh, on the left-hand side of the site plan uh, that will be replaced by uh, essentially this, this building. Now, this building is combining both the halfway house activity and uh, the administrative aspects of the superintendent's uh, staff. Um, 
which is presently located in the shop building, which was the existing building that uh, that uh, Mr. Derek talked about that is going to stay and be renovated. The renovation of that building is essentially to move the, the uh, administrative offices out of there and move them into this new building and then just take the area that they vacated in the shop building and uh, use that for more storage. So it, it's this is an upgrade of what would be the uh, staff's uh, 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 space, you know, new locker rooms, uh, new break areas, uh, office space for the super and the, the assistant superintendents. Uh, I, I showed you the one the one plan there was the lower floor. Uh, this this building too, you'll see by the elevations in a minute, is kind of stepped into the hillside. Uh, the lower part of your your page here is uh, on the uh, maintenance yard side and the upper part is facing the golf course. The upper part has the, uh, has the uh, halfway house in the middle. And then the lower part uh, has the break rooms and the locker rooms and the like on the, on the, on the backside opening up to the bottom of the hill. Then on the second floor, uh, there's the superintendent's office access by way of the stair here. There's an assistant superintendent's office, a bathroom, uh, the super's office, and another bathroom. These are all under roof, uh, so they're they're more or less uh, in keeping with the style of the main clubhouse. So uh, this sheet here shows the elevations of the building. Uh, the upper left shows you the side elevation. You can see where the grade changes there. Uh, so the right-hand side is the maintenance side. The upper side here is the halfway house side. And the, uh, the elevation to the right of that is the uh, facing the halfway house. There's access to the halfway house internally on left and right. And then there's a member's bathroom uh, proposed on either side of that. So anybody coming off the ninth hole uh, has the ability to use the bathroom or get a, a bite to eat and then continue on. Uh, these upper dormers are actually in the, uh, the uh, superintendent's office up top, which is under this roof here. And then going to the lower left, this is the elevation that you would see on the maintenance facility side or the driveway by the maintenance facility uh, between the, the halfway or the admin building and the cold storage building. And then this is the opposite elevation uh, cutting into the hill. Uh, as, as we said, it, it, we gave you a height of, I, I, I think uh, Tim had mentioned, and uh, 31 some odd feet, but that's really from the lowest elevation to the highest point uh, of the ridge here on the maintenance side. It's uh, uh, quite a bit lower up on the, on the on the more visible side, I'll say. And uh, as we were talking before, I realized that you know some of these buildings are actually a few feet lower than the uh, than the fairway that uh, abuts it. So they are also down in scale when it comes to that. Uh, from a, vis uh, a visibility standpoint. This just shows a cross section of the space. You can see how it's kind of tucked into the hill and there's a four foot, uh, four some odd foot differential uh, between floors here. Then uh, moving on to, whoop, skip, moving on, hang on. Uh, this is the existing shop building, we call it. Uh, this, is, this is the one that is remaining. Um, essentially, what we did was uh, lower the, the right, the left hand side shows you uh, a plan with all the offices and the like uh, uh, running around the perimeter. We've taken those out. That's the administrative area that I said was relocated to the halfway house uh, superintendent's building uh, that we just showed you. Uh, and what's happening now is that we've brought this all back. Uh, this is the existing plan to. Or the proposed plan to the right. We brought this all back to uh, the maintenance shop and some storage uh, for additional equipment to get uh, out from the cold, more or less. And that building is uh, on the exterior is not changing. So uh, that is the most evident building you see from uh, Punch Bowl. And there is a little limited visibility of that from Punch Bowl, although there are some mature trees uh, between it and the uh, and the roadway itself and two fairways. So it's a, it's a, a pretty good distance off the road. This, uh, this, this last building I'm gonna talk about is the cold storage building. Uh, um, essentially it has three components to it. One is uh, about uh, two thirds of this building is what is known as cold storage, which is essentially uh, equipment storage that doesn't need to be in conditioned space. 
Uh, so it's, uh, it's uh, mowers and tractors and uh, the, the things that they don't want to keep outside. Uh, right now, the, the existing cold storage building is in rough shape. It's rusted, it's dented, it's, uh, it's uh, on its last legs, and it's undersized for what they need. So this is a, uh, essentially a, a customized pre-engineered building that we designed that has access from uh, pretty much all sides to allow accessibility to any of the equipment inside. So you know, nothing's like, you don't have to move 20 pieces to get to the, uh, the mower that you want or the, or the spreader that you want. Uh, everything's pretty readily uh, accessible. Uh, and then about midpoint here, and I'll show you in a plan shortly, uh, it's, uh, we'll call this the environmental area. And then at the far end, uh, there are two essentially uh, drive-through uh, bays, uh, a la a gas station, and I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute as well. Um, these are either end of the building. This uh, one on the on the right here shows you that that um, that uh, fueling area. It's a fueling and wash bay area is what it is. Is uh, wide open uh, to the uh, to the uh, elements, but uh, with the exception of a roof over the top. And then uh, this is the uh, other elevation that faces the halfway house uh, side of the uh, the. Uh, plan and let me uh, I skipped over the plan for a minute um, so here is the floor plan of that building it's uh, 6,000 square feet of cold storage another 2,400 square feet of what I'll call uh, environmental and then uh, these open wash bays here and fueling bays so the way this works is the uh, equipment either in the morning or after after use uh, would come into uh, these open bays. There's there's uh, the ability to, to put, you know, four or five pieces of equipment on both sides of the uh, of the aisle here, so they could be uh, washing it down or fueling it, uh, fueling the equipment uh, from a fuel tank here. It's a split fuel tank above ground, uh, what they call a convolt system, which is a, uh, it's a I think it's a thousand and a thousand gallon uh, split diesel and uh, and uh, regular fuel. And uh, they use a hose, they fill up their equipment um, and or if they're washing down, there's a wash down component over here with power washers and the like, and they wash off all the, uh, the uh, fertilizer or whatever's on the equipment, grass clippings and everything else. And that is all collected. There's a drainage system that's part of this wash bay area. That's all collected in that drainage system. Uh, this is kind of curved area too, so it's all contained within here. And that uh, all gets recycled through a, through a uh, recycling system in this little portion of the building here. Uh, the system that we're using is a system called Carb Troll. I think um, I know Jim's familiar with it because we're, we proposed it for Springbrook Country Club as well. Uh, essentially, it's a state-of-the-art state of uh, piece of equipment that um, uses carbon to filter out all the impurities uh, in this uh, recycled water. Uh, they have a, a limited a, a a limited amount of water use that they just keep using over and over again. They recharge it uh, when you know through evaporation you lose some, so they recharge it. But that water is filtered through these filters. Um, and the beauty of the carb troll system is that actually, if there happen to be a little bit of an overflow when you're filling your uh, your your mower up or wherever on the fuel, uh, the carbon actually cleans out the fuel uh, as well. So it go, it all goes through the same system. Uh, so it's a very it's a very complete system and it's a state of the art system. Um, so environmentally, uh, like every other club uh, that's not up to speed uh, with the environmental aspects of uh, th this is not mandated, by the way, this is a voluntary thing to upgrade state of the art. But uh, there's a lot of clubs that will wash uh, just open air and, and, you know, essentially the grass clippings will go where they may and whatever's on the mower goes where they may. Uh, that's a common practice in a lot of golf clubs. Uh, these guys have taken the, uh, the, the step to really upgrade their uh, environmental uh, stewardship. So uh, the, other, the other aspect of this is uh, uh, a, a chemical mix area for uh, fertilizers and the like. It's a system that, uh, you know, uh, pre-mixes uh, stuff. And they, there's, a, there's a central location here that'll, that'll uh, allow them to fill their sprayers. And again, that's to the filtration system as well. So if anything is uh, overflowed or spilled, goes back through the filtration system. 
And then this upper area on the top here is really just storage, palletized storage for the chemicals and the fertilizers and the like that have to be uh, used into the, uh, in, into the mix system or used in the spreaders and, and uh, spread on the course. Uh, so this building also has a, uh, a proposal for uh, a uh, interior mezzanine over the center here that could add another couple thousand square feet, of, excuse me, of limited storage and when I say mezzanine, it's really for, uh, you know, items that they'd only use often that they would forklift up on top of the mezzanine uh, just to save some uh, physical floor space. Uh, so it's not, a, it's not a mezzanine for occupancy. It's a mezzanine strictly for uh, storage of uh, materials that they don't have to get to on a uh, regular basis. Uh, uh, that's my direct, and I'd be happy to answer anybody's question. Okay, board members, any qu questions for the architect? Ms. Van Roder? Yes, thank you. Um, I just had a quick question to understand better on um, the total square footage of the proposed cold storage structure, which I understand has more than just cold storage in it. So uh, you, you'd mentioned 6,000 square feet, 2,400 for environmental. I'm taking that to mean the, the um, carb, troll, carb troll system that you described, but um, in the aggregate, what is the, um, what is the total square footage of that structure? So, so we are, it, it, we are 64, I'm sorry, 8,400 uh, in these two areas here, which is the cold storage and the environmental, and then another 2,400 open air, and then we have another 2,000 uh, of uh, mezzanine storage. So, you know, you're, uh, what did I say, 6, 24, 48, I can so add you're 10,800 <laughs> 10, internal space uh, yeah. of floor area, and then the Got open, it. the open uh, base. And um, in the the structure that's currently there that you described as dilapidated and you know out of date and no longer functioning or you know not repairable. Clearly, it's understandable that the applicant wants to um, upgrade these structures. I'm just wondering, as a comparison, what is the size of the current the oh, current structure so that, that, building, that meets uh, this need? Yep, yeah, that building is six thousand is six thousand thousand square feet cold storage so it's basically this 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 portion of the building here um, this component is a new component that uh, the environmental portion so that's additional mm -hmm. and the uh, mezzanine is additional but we've also uh, picked up a little bit more space in what I said before that re remodeled shop building and that was uh, that was needed as well because uh, presently uh, what mr. Derrick said um, or actually but the uh, Mr. Bromwich said is true. There's a lot of equipment now that doesn't have a home. It's sitting outside and we need more physical space to bring that equipment in the building. Not only is it, uh, you know, kills the, the, the life of the equipment, it's also mm -hmm. not something that's, uh, you know, you, you really want to look at from the golf course either. You know, so they want to, they want to really clean it up visually as well. I understand. Thank you. That, uh, thank you for that explanation. Um, I, uh, I listened carefully to the carb troll uh, filtration system explanation, which was quick, and I'll need to probably Google that a bit. Um, it's very interesting, and I'm, I, I applaud uh, the applicant's decision to make the upgrade to this sort of system. I'm also just curious, what are they currently doing, or what have they historically done to wash away, uh, to wash this equipment? Um, they, just as they a have point a of comparison. Pad. Yeah, they have a wash pad, outside wash pad, that uh, goes into a sump uh, where they collect everything in a bucket and they take it off, which is better than most because most just let it fly onto the uh, onto the uh, uh, the open ground. So um, I think that uh, they're they're uh, not a not a bad offender, uh, but they're going to improve themselves quite a bit with what they're proposing here. Yes. Thank you very much. I appreciate your answers. No problem. Thank you. Any other board members? 
I too would like to commend you on the environmental aspect of this. Um, I think it's really very important. And it's, it's nice to know that applicants out there are thinking about these things and really seriously considering them. Um, I'll move to um, professionals. Jim, do you have any questions? No, no questions. Uh, Liz? No, no questions, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Warner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and I apologize if this was already covered. Uh, I'll direct it to uh, Mr. Warding and Council. Um, the TCC memo, December 3, did we uh, either stick to everything or already cover it, one through nine? Yes, we, uh, we, we agreed to all of it. Okay, thank you. And uh, so then specifically with respect to the Environmental Commission's memo of March 15th, uh, I take it you'll step if you haven't already to uh, continued uh, maintenance and inspection as of the stormwater management. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Uh, and uh, the additional landscaping, the native species recommendation in the Environmental Commission's recommendation, is that something you can agree to? Larry? Yeah, yeah I, believe, I believe it is, Steve. Okay. And uh, no rooftop solars on anything? Done proposed. Electric space and water heating. And no electric space and water heating? No. Okay. Just wanted to get the clarification there. Thank you. And uh, I don't have anything else. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you. And we'll open up for questions to members of the public. Any members of the public have questions for the architect? None. Um, Mr. Kelly, you done with your witnesses? We are, Mr. Chairman. I just want to thank the board again for your time this evening. Relatively straightforward application for a permitted use that's been here for quite a long time. A lot of thought and effort went into these plans. This has been ongoing for over a year that Mr. Bromage secured and um, uh, asked Mr. Roding and Langen Engineering to prepare these plans in comport with the goals of the club. A lot of eco-friendly and state-of-the-art improvements, which are always a good thing. They're gratuitous here, but it's wonderful. The net change to the club is zero. No intensification of operations. The limits are these accessory improvements, which are well within the confines of this extremely large property with the setbacks measured in several hundreds of feet if not uh, north of a thousand in certain cases. We think that there's certainly no negative impact here. Uh, and we think it's nothing but upside for modernization of this existing permitted use that's on the property in the township. And again, I wanna thank the board for your time this evening, your staff, always wonderful at getting us through TCC, getting us to the, bo the board, notwithstanding this difficult virtual format. I wanna thank you again for diligently getting us to the hearing. I know the applicant is very appreciative as well. Okay, thank you. Why don't we go over the stipulations? Uh, certainly, Mr. Chairman. For, uh, first, the relief sought, as I understand it, and anyone and everyone are welcome to correct me where I'm wrong. Uh, the uh, preliminary and final site plan approval and bulk variance relief, uh, there are five identified accessory structures that technically are in the front yard. Uh, did we open it up for the public for comment? Not for comments. Very good. Thank you. Uh, that's why we have a Thank vice, you, board member. Our vice chair. Our vice chair. Alexo, I slipped. As well, did the chair. As did the chair. <laughs> but I opened it up for questions for the witness. But, but that's why we have a vice chair. Should we interrupt and do that now? Please. Please do. So let's do that. If any members of the public have comments on this application, please feel free to raise your hand and uh, make comments. We'll throw you in. Okay, seeing none, I'll close the public comment period. And we can resume with Mr. Warner's. Uh, now that the uh, 
there has, it's been confirmed there's no public comment. Uh, preliminary and final site plan approval, bulk variance is as follows. Uh, five buildings were identified as accessory structures that are technically in the front yard in that they are in front of the principal building, the clubhouse, uh, the various uh, uh, dimensions, or excuse me, the various uh, uh, distances from uh, the right of way were set forth. Uh, four of those five buildings uh, are accessory structures that exceed 15 feet in height and the various heights were given. Uh, there were also some uh, columns uh, that constitute fences within the front yard that are in excess of 3.5 feet tall uh, and uh, more than 25% or less than 25, more than 25% or less than 25% opaque? Jim? <laughs> they are... <laughs> More than 25%. More than 25% opaque. Thank you, Jim. Uh, and uh, uh, technically, we, uh, there continues to be a variance required or a new variance required for the total parking spaces, even though they are closer to conformity perhaps than was previously approved. There's still a deficiency in the par number of parking spaces, 242 total proposed versus 616 uh, total required. Uh, is the Delta. Uh, and uh, the new parking spaces uh, as uh, were the old existing parking spaces, I believe continue to be nine by 18, as opposed to 10 by 18, which is what our ordinance, was, well, yeah, what our ordinance requires. I believe that is all the relief that is sought. Anyone wish to correct me? I had one other item, there's a, uh six foot high fence that would still be considered in, in front of the primary structure. I mean, it's a technicality, but uh, you know, one of the fences that's, um, I'll say facing Punchbowl Road, it's, it's still over 600 feet back from Punchbowl Road, but technically it's in the front yard. Okay, so then that would be another accessory structure in the front yard uh, being added to those five buildings that were identified, correct Jim? Correct. Okay. Uh, if that is all on the relief, then that is all on the relief. Uh, and the stipulated two conditions in addition to uh, items one through nine in the TCC memo uh, and uh, the first two items uh, in the Environmental Commission memo with respect to stormwater management, maintenance and inspections and uh, native species for landscaping uh, would be uh, the continuation of the obligation of the applicant to comply with all uh, 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 stipulated two conditions in prior resolutions to the extent same are not inconsistent with this approval, if it is an approval. Um, and I do not believe, but again, anyone and everyone correct me, uh, I do not believe there are any other conditions of approval that were independently uh, raised or stipulated to Tonight, with one addition, John. Actually, I have several. Uh, there's a emergency spillway that uh, you agreed to stabilize if necessary. Uh, there's a cast iron grate that's going to be replaced with an aluminum grate. Um, there's an embankment with landscaping that's going to be revised to secure the embankment only, no root intrusion. Uh, there'll be an operation manual for stormwater management and access agreements an exhibit for the site triangles on the access road. The washdown area will include a recycling component and a solid waste removal component. And I'm sorry if I'm repeating the environmental, but the trees are going to replace one for one deciduous with deciduous evergreen for evergreen. And all open permits will be closed prior to uh, approval being finalized. <laughs> to the extent not already closed. Uh, Mr. Cowley. Uh, did we add anything that you think uh, was not stipulated to, or did uh, feel free to let us know if we missed anything? No, I, I appreciate you asking. I, I have all of that captured in my notes as well, and and those are all conditions the applicants are amenable to undertaking. And, and I have a few more. I mean, some of these are kind of technicalities, but uh, provide a sloping trash rack, trash rack for the uh, low flow orifice. Uh, we will provide the, uh, the no plant list uh, to the golf club, uh, and that'll be reviewed and checked. Um, 
copies of the uh, LOI or, or any wetland permits will be provided as, as they are obtained. And uh, a sanitary sewer connection fee will be required in accordance with ordinance uh, requirements. And, and that was the last items I had. Still no objection, Mr. Kelly. No objection. I'm running out of paper though to write the conditions. So <laughs> That's right. Right. Done. We have, a, we have a Franken attorney here. We have a three-headed uh, attorney monster that we discussed with all these conditions. Um, the, uh, so that that is what we have uh, in the event it's an approval, Mr. Chairman. If it's a denial, there will be no conditions. Uh, but it's for the uh, board, hopefully now, to deliberate and vote. Uh, and uh, we do have. Uh, how many members? Nine. I lost track. Uh, do we have nine? I had it at the beginning. I believe we have nine board members. So uh, five out of nine for passes. We have nine. Um, board members, any Here, comments? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Lesson. I'll make a motion that we approve this application based upon the Resolute, uh, excuse me, stipulations that were steps uh, stated by our our council and uh, the rest of the three headed monster. This is Linda Murphy. I second that motion. Thank you, Ms. Murphy. Um, on the roll call. So uh, we'll start with uh, Jesse Flowers. Yes. Tanya Van Order. Yes. Kathy Wilson? Yes. George Quinlan? Yes. Linda Murphy? Yes. Mayor Jorfrey? Yes. Michael Nunn? Yes. And Chairman Benoit? Yes. Congratulations, Mr. Cowie. Oh, but, but we have a vice chair. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you, vice chair. chair. Have a wonderful vice night, guys. Appreciate seeing Thank everybody. Thank you. We'll see you soon. Bye. Thank wait, you. Wait. We're we have to we have missed, we missed Sonia, a vote. Sonia substitute missed uh, Mr. Alesso. We have one more person to vote. Yes, <laughs> there we go. It, since he made the motion, that's important. Motion. Not nine zero, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you for the applicant. Thanks again. Good night, folks. Good night. Good night, Good night everybody. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Okay, we do have uh, a little more business, Mr. Chairman. We have number item number seven. Other matters. Um, Kathy, is there an environment? Uh, yeah, I board? have a quick statement. The uh, League of Municipalities held their first in person legislation committee meeting last Friday, um, which I did attend. And the, the one uh, topic that was discussed in a couple of the different subcommittees that is relevant to us is um, what to do about non-electric vehicles parking in EV parking places. So there were a couple of different bills brought up. There, there seemed to be, there was not a consensus. Um, one of the bills that my subcommittee worked on, they were generally in support of the notion, but opposed to the penalties that were a part of the bill. So um, I, I, my sense is that this will be a topic that will be, uh, will come up and uh, may come up in our town as well. So that is my report of the, of that meeting. And I will say also just briefly that we are um, uh, plugging along on getting our sustainable Jersey certification and there will be some uh, legislative items <clears throat> coming uh, to this board um, for, for your consideration. We don't have them before you tonight, but they're coming pretty soon. Will these be resolutions that we need to adopt? Um, <clears throat> Um, yeah, most, most, a few, yes, the, the, yes. So the, the sustainable Jersey requirement for, for concurrent. There, there's a number of different actions. I was just giving you a head up, a heads up. There's a few different um, land use related actions that, um, 
some require a resolution, some will just be kind of an FYI requiring us to fill out um, a checklist uh, by us, I mean the green team. So this is the first time we've ever applied for certification and um, there's various forms of documentation that are needed and various pieces of information that will we need to sh share with different boards. Okay, Kathy, great. this is Linda. I just have a question of you, if I may. Yes. Um, is there any way that you can share in advance some of the sustainable New Jersey certification criteria, especially how it would apply to the planning board or perhaps the board of adjustment in advance of our... Um, in advance of the meeting? Yeah, in advance of our meeting or in advance of our discussion so that people have an opportunity to kind of look at it and, and try to understand it. Yes, yeah. yes, I, I agree, that's important. Um, it, our first time through this, we're kind of feeling our way on what the sequencing is. Uh, we have before us right now a sustainable land use pledge, which, um, which is going to be come before the governing body and then will be shared with the land use boards. So um, it's, um, I don't think the planning board will be meeting again um, before this comes before the township committee. But your point is well taken, Linda. We're, we're, we're kind of, we're going through this on the first time and kind of, uh, struggling a little bit with how to structure the sequencing of things. Thank you. How does it work, Kathy? If we missed an application, we can apply again next year? The way it works is that um, there's the, it, the initial um, requirements, we, we have to submit our initial um, application materials by May 22nd but then they review it, they, Sustainable Jersey, reviews it at their end and they get back to us with feedback. So then we have a chance to revise again and submit again in August. And then there's a second opportunity for revision at our end. And the, the final sort of you know drop dead date is um, November. So, we are reasonably sure we should be able to get everything done by November. There are things that we will not have finalized by May, but we can notify Sustainable Jersey that we're planning to work on it. Yeah, just to, if I may, I'm sorry, another question. This is Linda. <clears throat> um, I, I don't know what kind of criteria are involved in getting a Sustainable New Jersey certification, but is this something that perhaps we should seek public input on? There are various um, opportunities and requirements, as a matter of fact, for public input on certain of the actions. So for example, one of our actions that we're working on is to um, before, by November or before have in place a complete streets policy and there are various um, requirements along the way to obtain um, public input on that. And so that's one of our bigger actions and um, it's running, that's being um, handled through the Transportation Advisory Committee. But different, you know, what I, what I can send, um, I can send to the board a list of the actions that we're undertaking. If you, if people would be interested in that, there, there, the categories that overlap planning board interests are um, land use and transportation and natural resources. And then there's another category on community outreach. And I can, I can send you an overview of the actions that were planning to um, apply to get, you know, to get to create documentation for if, if that if people would be interested in that. It sounds like you would be Linda. 
I, I think I, I think I would be yes, and and particularly as it relates to transportation, and you yes. know the reason why. You and I have been working on another uh, issue regarding that. So thank you. Perhaps you could send that to Sonia, and she could distribute it. The one thing I will say is that Sustainable Jersey has is is a, just an it's an incredible resource. There's so much background information about how to undertake the various actions. And I, I consider that to be one of the most um, valuable aspects of this program is when you apply for the certification, it requires you to use their resources and the resources are helpful in showing you how to do what you're trying to do. But we're going through it for the first time. So we're, you know, we haven't um, worked through all the bugs before. Are there, are there certain benefits we get from being sustainable or is it like a feel good thing? Um, the process of getting certified, you know, there are certain things like from a, from afar, we say we do that, but when you kind of dig into it um, to, 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 you know, to comply with the certification requirements, it does require certain um, improvements and I just, I think it's a good thing for us to do. It's not just feel good. It's improvement in our practices with guidance from an organization that has a lot of experience um, around the state and with other um, municipalities. I think there are more than, what, about 250 plus uh, towns that are certified through Sustainable Jersey. One, one last question, Kathy, if I may. Um, mm -hmm. is, is this a certification process that it's once and done or is there an ongoing certification requirement? Um, you, you do it and then I think it's like two or three years later you renew, but certain of the actions are um, a kind of ongoing, you know, and when you reapply in the future, you have to renew. It, it will definitely be easier in the future because we'll have certain things, <clears throat> excuse me, in place that we can just draw on again. We're, we're starting with no documentation right now. <clears throat> so, um, but yes, it, it can be renewed. And honestly, as I work with this, there are lots of things we do that we could get points for. What we're trying to do uh, the green team, we're handling the documentation and we're trying to proceed uh, with kind of minimal um, impact on our professionals. We're very mindful that people are really busy and have a lot on their plate. and We're trying to not <clears throat> um, make any excessive demands on anybody's time, but at the same time, keep people informed on on what we're doing. So we're trying to balance that. Okay, thank you. Um, should we move on? Do you have more, Kathy? Or? No, that's it. Okay, Mr. Thanks. Chairman, I, I had a quick update. Mr. Mayor, yes. Um, I think last meeting or the meeting before I gave an update that we were searching for a second sponsor to our 21 day notice legislation in the state Senate. Uh, we have secured that second sponsor, so it is now a uh, bipartisan effort that is being introduced in the state Senate, and we will have further details on that uh, in hopefully the next month or so, um, trying to garner support for the bill's passage and an introduction in the state assembly. So um, we've crossed a major hurdle actually having the bill introduced in the state house, and we will do everything we can to uh, support its uh, progress there. Impressive, thank you. Um, should we move on, resolution? If there's nothing further with the legislative committee report, yeah, the last uh, other matter is uh, resolution for stormwater management consultants for a particular matter. Yeah, so there was a resolution that, uh, draft resolution that was circulated to the uh, board members and it was for retaining Joe Scooping. You may recall that the board retained previously. Uh, for some stormwater management projects in particular. He did work on the uh, Honeywell redevelopment 
and uh, we're looking to bring him back to uh, help with the uh, stormwater management review for the uh, uh, zone change to uh, we'll allow the Red Bulls on that Honeywell site. And, and that's only if I understand correctly, uh, Jim, uh, uh, at the point of a site plan application, which is down the road, correct? Correct. Board members, any questions, comments? I, I have a question, but it's not related to anything we've covered so far. Can I ask a separate question? Is it related to this resolution or do you want to make it later on? No, it's not related to anything we're discussing right now. We should, we should just well, ado uh, adopt the yeah, resolution. Yeah, why don't we just or... adopt the resolution and we'll go to other questions. If, if that's okay. Can I get a motion on this resolution? I'll make a motion. Mr. Alessa? Accept the resolution. Second? I'll second the resolution um, on the roll call, Jim. Sure, uh, Jesse Flowers. Yes. Tanya Van Order. Yes. Kathy Wilson. Yes. Vice Chair Joe Alesso. <laughs> yes. Muted. George Quinlan. Yes. Linda Murphy? Yes. Mayor Jorfrey? Yes. Mike Dunn? Yes. Chairman Benoit? Yes. Great. Thank you. Ms. Murphy? So I don't know if this has to be discussed in closed session, so I would ask for Steve's advice on this. It has to do with Florham Park. Oh, um, and a particular site that straddles Florham Park in our township, which is, uh, as I understand it, the subject matter of uh, litigation? Yes. That would be executive session. <laughs> it's not a litigation involving this board, but it's litigation that I'm aware of involving the township as a whole. So if there's anything to be discussed, uh, I would certainly want it to be an executive session uh, and, and do we I, do we have I anything else? In, do we have anything else in open session that we have to cover? Only public commentary. And, and the only thing I would say is, uh, uh, Board Member Murphy, is there a reason why it would be appropriate to discuss in executive session for this planning board as opposed to the governing body, since the planning board is not a party to that litigation? I and I, currently I, has nothing involved with that. I, I have a, a, I have a relevance question to Florham Park and Harding. I, I defer to the chair if we want to go into executive we can, session. We didn't. Uh, we we have ex, uh, we have executive session available uh, on the agenda. So we can do that. So why don't we first um, open up? to members of the public for any public comments they may have on anything pertaining to the planning board, but not related to the applications that we discussed this evening. Seeing no hands raised, right? We'll close public comment period and I'll entertain a resolution to go into. Yeah, we just need a uh, it be a resolution to go into executive session uh, under uh, the exception number seven of the Open Public Meetings Act, which provides for attorney-client privilege communications as well as specifically uh, uh, privilege and confidential uh, discussions regarding pending or anticipated lit litigation. This, I believe, would be pending litigation at least related to pending litigation. Uh, so it is uh, uh, an acceptable exception to the Open Public Meetings Act. Uh, and uh, any information uh, uh, discussed during this executive session, uh, when uh, it can be released, would be released after it's no longer required to be maintained as privileged and confidential. Um, that would be the motion if the board uh, wishes to make a motion second and a roll call vote on that resolution then we can go into executive session, exclude the public and discuss the matter. Okay. 
Do I have a resolution for that purpose? I move that resolution. Motion by Linda. I will second. Second by Mr. Alesso. Want a roll call? You do an all in favor or you want a roll call? Uh, do a roll call. It's a resolution, please. Um, Jeff Flowers? Yes. Tony Ben Order? Yes. Kathy Wilson? Yes. Joe Lesso? Yes. George Quinlan? Yes. Linda Murphy? Yes. Mayor Jorfrey? Yes. Mike Dunn? Yes. Chairman Benoit? Yes. Okay. So we have to. So, any uh, members of the public, we ask that you uh, drop off the uh, Zoom because we're going to go into uh, closed session. Is that there? Why don't you just ask for a motion? I got a great note. Vice Chair, I ask for a motion to adjourn. No, 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 no. We have to discuss what's coming up at the next meeting. Oh, have, oh I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> 18th, April 18th meeting is the Savage Minor Subdivision and uh, continuation of the Anna Management application. Which one will be first? We always run with uh, what was carried, so Anna Management will be first. Okay. Uh, chair, chair always has the discretion to override that. That's well, April it's back, so. That's April 18th. Would you want to do the next meeting, Jim? Or? The next meeting, nothing is currently scheduled. Ah, okay, good. And if you'll uh, do the uh, Anna Management second, I'll be, able just... to, uh, I'll be able to sit on the first half. I won't be able to sit on the second half. All right, I'm sorry. So for, for the 18th, which two applications are there? We've got the uh, Savage Minor Subdivision and the Anna Management Continuation. And I'm not available. To, um, I have to recuse myself from the Anna Management because of the complex. I'm going to do that secondly for the. You wouldn't mind. That way I can stop being. Pardon me. Any objections to that? I think that's how you're going to do it anyway. I like it too because I'm recused as well. Okay, so we'll do that. Very good. Oh, can I make a motion to adjourn now? <laughs> <laughs> well, who else would check my notes? <laughs> Set, yes, you may. But the chair, the chairman, back, back. the chairman's back, so he'll call the roll call. Well, we already made the motion. Who seconded it? I second. Chief Dunn. Hey. Chief Dunn, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we did it. Thank Go you. Kansas. Uh, <laughs> thanks, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night everyone. Bye -bye.